Right, awesome. Welcome to today's session, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to focus on creating a custom template um, with the site editor. Now, the lesson objectives for today, we are going to look at accessing and using the site editor to add custom templates. Um, we're also going to discuss um, templates and template parts, and we will also be assigning templates um, to a page or post using the template editor. Um, I'm using WordPre WordPress 6.2 today, and um, the theme I'm using on all my test websites um, will be the 2023 theme, and I have not installed any additional plugins. So I just wanted to um, clarify that at the start. So custom templates. Let's just talk about that a little bit. Custom templates allow you to use a different design or layout from the rest of your website. This means you can create a page or post template with a unique header, footer, or other page elements. So why a custom template? Well, you might want to create a custom template for an event, a landing page, different types of blog posts, or even have a unique or have unique styles for, for different pages on your site. And two examples I'm going to look at today is creating two different templates, custom templates, for two different types of um, blog posts that I want to display on my website. And the other one is a landing page. But before we, we look at those examples, I thought let's first discuss um, the site editor templates and template parts a bit, and also just clarify how all of that, all of those things work. Okay, so I'm going to jump to my first test website. There we go. And you will notice on my homepage, I have a specific header here, and um, I've got some content. And then I have a footer. Now, my footer and my header was created in the site editor. Um, and I used the page template to do that. And the reason I use the page template is um, I set a static, I set a static home page and I set a blog page separately. So therefore, my, my home page and all my other pages will, will be assigned to the page template. And the page template um, will have this header and this footer. So they will all share this header and footer. And I've, I've assigned this, um, this template to, um, to my pages. But for my sample page, you will notice there in my navigation menu, for my sample page, I wanted to have a different page structure. So therefore, I created a custom template so that um, the page looks completely different. All right, so let's click on sample page. So when I click on my sample page, you will notice, okay, wow, it's a different header. And I've actually also added a different footer. All right, so this is on the front end. Let's see this from the site editor site. So I'm going to make my way to my dashboard. And I'm going to make my way to appearance. And as I said, if you look at appearance, you will see that I have installed the 2023 theme. And we are going to make our way to the editor or the site editor, because this is where we create site structure. Okay, and I want to elaborate on this a bit more. So you will notice you've got templates and you've got template parts. And as we said, you, we use templates to create a, a design and structure for, for pages. You can think of it as um, a picture frame. It is the frame for your website, like your header and your footer. And the template parts, those are usually your headers and your footers, but you can also create other page elements. So let's open up our page template. You'll notice if you go to templates and you click on page template, you can click on the pencil there at, um, 
um, top left, or you can merely just click on the screen and it will take you into your page template. So here is my, um, my page template and I've used template parts, header template parts and footer template parts to structure my template. Okay, so here's my, my header template part and here is my footer template part. And you will notice you don't really see any content here. Let's open our list view. So there's my header, there's my footer. Those are my template parts I use to create structure. And if you open up your group block here, you will notice that this is the post content block. So a reminder for folks, we don't add content in the site editor. So we don't add content to our, um, our templates. We add the content to a page or to a post. But having this post content block here, it will pull it in. It will pull in the information or it will pull in the content from the page or post that's assigned to this template. Okay, so here is my page template and that's what you saw on the front end. So if I click on the WordPress icon and I go to templates again, you will notice I created a custom template called sample custom template. And I, if I click on that, and then on the screen, and if we open up our list view, you will see this is where I added a new unique header and a unique footer. And again, we have the post content block that will pull in the content from the page or post that has been assigned to this template. All right. So let's go to the dashboard um, to show you how to assign. Oh no, before I do that, let's just go to templates again. Um, you will notice, let's talk about templates first. You will notice that there are certain templates that are built in and come with your theme. For example, the 404 template, um, the index template that can display posts, the page template, the single template that displays um, single posts. But you can also click on the plus icon to add new templates. And you will notice there's a list of, of templates that you, can, that you can add, but we are after this one, custom template. So this is how we are going to add a custom template. And we'll do that later when we look at our first and second example. And the same goes for template parts. You have certain template um, template parts that, that come with your theme. You'll notice there's some more now because of, I've already um, created some, um, but you'll notice, for example, this footer one, this is one that comes with your, um, with your theme. And we can see that here. If you go to manage all template parts, you can actually see the ones that come with your theme and the ones that I've already created. And you will notice when you've customized or changed a, a template that comes with your theme, it says customized below there. If we go to templates, you'll see the same thing. Let's go to templates and manage all templates. And there you will see all the templates that come with your theme. There you will see I've customized my page template. And you will also notice some of the the custom templates that I've created. You'll see my, uh, my name and image there. Okay, so if we go to our, our page, our pages, um, so let's look at our home page, for example, because that's the first one we saw on the front end. So if I click on the home page, um, you would have noticed if, if we go back, it says front page, and I've got a blog post page. And I did that when I went to settings and I went to reading. You will notice I set a static homepage and a blog page. So then if I go to pages, it says front page, blog page. And if we open our homepage, we will see 
in the sidebar, in the sidebar settings, that this page has been assigned to the page template. So if I click on that, it says templates define the way content is displayed when viewing your site. And this has been assigned to the, the default template, the page, which is the page template. Now, as I said earlier on, we add all our content here. So you, you'll see here's all the content. And remember, it's going to be pulled in by the post content block in your template. Okay, so here's all our content. We can see that this home page has been assigned to the page template. But we assigned a different template to our sample page. So if we look at our sample page, again, you will notice my content. But now, in our sidebar settings, next to templates, you'll notice I have assigned this page to the sample custom template. So therefore, on the front end, this page will have a, a unique header and, and footer. And just a reminder, if we go to the front, front end, so here's the, the header from your page template your footer from your page template. And here is the content being pulled in by the post content block. And if I go to my sample page, same thing. This page has been assigned to my custom template. And now it's got a different header and a different footer. And the content is still being pulled in by the post content block. Okay. So that was a bit of, of background um, about templates, template parts, and custom templates. Are there any questions at this stage before we look at some examples? Is there anything that I can clarify or any question that you have? I will jump over to my next test website so long. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, that for my first example, I want to create two custom um, templates to display different blog posts. All right, I see there's a question. When you create a custom page, do you have to manually assign it to a page each time? Um, yes, Larry, so, and that's where I showed you um, when you go to pages in the sidebar settings, you, you have to ensure that you've assigned it to the um, to the to the page that you want it to be assigned to. But um, if you just want it to be assigned to the page template, it will be automatically assigned to the page template. Um, but to create a new, but yeah, to, if you create a new page. Um, or a new custom template, and you want to assign it, you have to do it manually. Okay, so on my test website here, um, you will see I've got home, movies, books, and then about. So here's my home page. And on my website, it's all about reviews, movie reviews, book reviews, and to make this happen, I am going to make a movies page that displays all my um, all my reviews or um, blog posts about movies, and I want to create a custom template that displays all my uh, reviews or blog posts about books. Okay, so to do that, of course, we need to create custom templates, and because I want those pages to look different than my um than my home page and other pages okay so let's do that so the first thing if we go to our dashboard and we go to pages i have of course created a movies page and i have created a books page and if you open the book page books page you'll see there's nothing in there and if you 
open your movies page, you will notice nothing is in there yet. But you will see that these um, pages are still applied to the page template, the, the, the default um, page template. All right, Anne's asking, and connected to that, can you create a conditional to show template only on some page types, like um, a custom post? Can you create a conditional to show template only on some page types? Um, yeah, we probably won't have time to go into custom um, custom posts. Um, but if I understand your your question correctly, can you create a conditional to show? Yes. So, so the answer is yes, you can. Um, and this is what I'm actually going to, to do now. I'm going to create two different um, blog pages. Okay, so as I said, this, is still a, this page is still applied to the page template. But now we are going to go to your site editor. So let's go to the editor. And here, of course, is our page template that we saw. And now we are going to, if you if you click on your site icon or WordPress icon, of course, your list of templates and template parts come up. So we are going to click on templates. And now I'm going to click on the plus sign or the plus icon. And I'm going to say, I want to create a custom template. And I'm going to call this movies template. And now I'm going to say create. And now you'll see there's nothing there. It's a it's a, an empty an empty template. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my new header. And I want this to be unique. So I'm going to add a header. And of course, if you had if you already created a template part or header template part, it will show you. But for today, let's just choose a new one. So I'm going to say, choose an existing header. So let's choose an existing one. And I'm going to use a pattern, a header pattern that comes with my theme. And I'm going to say, I want to use this, this one, the full width header with Euro image. So I want both of my pages to have that. So I'm going to select that. Great. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to change this image. So I'm going to say replace. And I've already added that to my, my media library. And I've added this image. And I'm going to say I want this. So I want this header for my movies blog page. So, apart from the footer, let's test the, the group out today. Apart from the, the footer, what is the next thing I must add? If I want to create um, blog posts, which block do I need to add to display posts? So we are displaying posts. So if we do, if so, I, I see some answers here. And if we were, if we are, we're going to display, um, if we were going to display content from that page, um, we would have used the post content block if we just added content to our movies page. But we actually one to display posts and to display posts, we need the query loop, query loop block. So yes, and thank you for, for highlighting that at the end. So yes, Gene, and I've already created a category for movies. So below my, my new header, I'm going to click on the three vertical dots and I'm gonna say insert after, and now I'm gonna add a query loop block. Because a query loop block, displays um, my blog posts. 
All right, so let's add my query loop block. Let's choose a pattern. Now you will notice I've already created posts. So let's see what pattern I like. Okay, so for now, I'm going to add this pattern. Okay, so there's my query loop block. It's displaying some of my posts. Let's open our query loop block and see what is in there. So we've got a post title, the post excerpt, and the post date. Well, I think below the post title, we want to add a post featured image. So let's say insert after, and let's type in post featured image. And you will notice if you add it to the one, it will appear everywhere else. Okay, cool. But you will notice there's some books here. All right, so um, this is a book. I know it's also a movie, but this is a book for my example today. We've got a movie, a movie, and we've got a, a book. Okay, so let me just save this for a moment and, and show you something first. So if we go to our dashboard, let's go to posts because these are the posts that I've already created, right? So here's my, um, my, my four posts that we saw. And below posts, you can go to categories. And you will notice I've created a, a books category and I've created a movies category. And then if you go to your posts, you will notice below categories, you can see I've applied the books category here, the movies here, movies, books. If you go to quick edit, you can change it there below categories. Okay, so just a bit of background. So now we're going to go back to our site editor. And we are going to go to templates. And we've already started with our movies custom template. We've added our header. And now we've added our query loop block to display our posts. But I only want to see movie posts. Right, and that's where Gene also said select. We're going to use categories. So make sure you select your query loop block. And the first thing you've got to do here is you've got to deselect inherit query from template. And th that means you can customize your the way your query loop is displayed. So let's just deselect that. We don't want to inherit that. And now when you deselect that, you will see some options here. You can change the columns, you can order it. There's some information about sticky posts, but we want to filter our posts. So we're going to go next to filters. We're going to click on the plus sign. Now you can filter posts by taxonomies, by the author, and even keywords. So the taxonomies are your categories, um, your tags, and even custom post types. But we don't have custom post types. So we are just going to select taxonomies for now. And then when we select it, you will notice there's filters, categories, and tags. Now, this we need our movies category. So I'm going to type in movies, and you will see it comes up. And when we select it, we will see that the other, um, the other blog posts disappear. So the one thing I still want to do here is... I want to say, I only want to have two columns. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add our footer. So insert after, forward slash footer. So let's choose um, one of our existing template parts. So I actually want to keep my footer the same as my other pages. So I'll just use my one of my existing template parts here. And I will add that here. And then click Save. So now my template for my movies page is completed. So of course, now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make our way to the dashboard, we're going to go to our movies page. 
movies page. We're going to go to the sidebar settings. We're going to say we want to apply this to the movies template. Right? And we are going to update. Now, I know with repetition, um, well, we learned through repetition. So I'm going to go through this again, but this time, of course, with my, my books blog page. So we'll make our way back to the editor. Click on templates. Click on the plus sign. Create a new custom template. And this is the books template. And then create. Okay, so to save some time, I just want to show you, I'm going to go, if you go to templates, template parts, um, you will notice that this template part is named um, full header with your image. That's the one. But we can't change that one. Otherwise, it will change for um, the movies template as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to copy this block. Copy block. Okay. And then while I'm in template parts, I'm going to create a new template part. So I'm, next to template parts, we can click on the plus sign. And now we can create a new template part. And of course, we want to create a header. And let's call this books header. And let's say create. And then we can make our way back to template parts. And you will see if you click on books header. Um, Susan, very good question. You can tell when a block is global when it's got a different color. So let's open our template part here. And now I'm going to paste that block here. And I'm going to replace it with a books. Let's select. Cool. So now I've created a template part for my books template. So let's just save that and double check. So that's, that's my books header. And then we still have this one for the movies, the full width header with Euro image. Now we can return to our templates and we were busy with the books template. So let's click on the screen or on the pencil. And now we can say forward slash template part. Let's choose one that I just created, and that's this one. And Susan, here you can see now this is global. If we open our list view, you will notice it's got this purple color, and therefore we know it's global. And if you change it here, it will change everywhere else. Um, it's, it's applied. All right, so again, after our header, we're going to add our query loop block. Insert after, so forward slash query loop block. Again, let's choose the same pattern as earlier on. It was this one. And of course, below the post title, insert after, we added a post featured image. And then we select our parent block again, which is the query loop block, because if you select the parent block, the sidebar settings will relate to the parent block. We deselect inherit query from the template because we want to change the, the query loop. We said we only want two columns. And this time for filters, again, we're going to select taxonomies. And for the category, it's going to be books this time. And of course, I've already created my category. So now I can just select books. 
and now the other two will disappear and we will only see um, posts with the books category. And then we're going to add our footer. So insert after forward slash footer. And again, we are going to use the existing template bot that's on, 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 all, on all our pages. And now we click save. Now we head back to our dashboard. Sorry, you can just click on the, the site icon or WordPress icon. We go to pages. We go to books. This is still applied to the page template, the default template. So now we want to apply the books page to the books template. And we can update. And now we can see what it looks like on the front end. So if we go to the front end of our website, here's the, the home page. Now, if we click on movies, we will see that this page has got a unique header and it's displaying posts with um, the movies category and then our footer. And if you go to books, same thing, unique header and it's displaying posts um, with the books category and we've got our footer. Now, of course, you can, you can modify how you want to display your, um, your query loop um, block any way you want. You could have chosen a different, um, you could have chosen a different um, pattern or, or whatever it may be. So maybe I'll use that as an example. So if you say edit page, I'm not going to edit the page. I'm going to edit the site. So it will take you to the site editor. So let's say, for example, for the books template, you know, if you open your template and you select your query loop, you can say replace. And you could have said, oh, no, I actually want my blog posts to be displayed this way. So it's small image and title. So let's select that. Now I've already modified these things, so that's fine. But yeah, you could you could have modified it that way or, or changed it that way if you if you wanted to. So cool. Um, Gene says, do you need to create a new template for single movie book or use the single template that come with the theme? So that's also a good question. Um, if we go to the single template, so the single template is just for how you want a single blog um, post to be displayed. And of course, in my case, um, I want all my blog um, posts to, um, yeah, I want all my blog posts to be displayed the same way. So. Um, if you change your, your single template once, um, it will apply to all your, um, all your blog posts. So I won't create a, a separate one for, um, for movies or a separate one for, for, uh, for books. All right. Any other questions about these examples before we move on to um, the landing page example? Okay, let me move on to my test website here. Okay, I'm just I'm in the dashboard. All right, so we said in the beginning that there's different reasons why you would want to create a custom template. As I said, you maybe want to have a, a create an event, or as we saw. Um, 
you wanted to have um, different different templates for different blog posts. Now, something else, for example, before we look at the landing page, um, in my example test website here, um, this is a photography website. Um, I created a custom template for my galleries page. So another reason you might want to create a custom template is because you just want some pages to have a unique header and a unique footer. Um, so if I go to galleries and to all my action sports photos, if you click on there, you will notice that my galleries um, page has got a unique header. It's got the same footer though, but I wanted to have this header. So if you go back to home, you will see this header. Same footer though. And for example, contact. So I just created a custom template for my galleries. All right. So I want to talk about a landing page. Now, a landing page can be seen as a marketing page. So a, lang a, lang a landing page is usually um, can be seen as a page that you want somebody to land on and, and do something or buy something or register for something. So you usually want um, a visitor to that page to take a specific action. So you don't want them to go to the rest of your website and, and get lost. You want them to, to take action and um, purchase something or, as I said, register for something. So for my example, I've already created a landing page. And there you'll see it's called landing page. Okay. Um, and I, what I did here is I merely used some patterns to create this example. So if I open up my list view, you will see three cover blocks here. And um, I called my, my company the music bar, the best deals in town. And this might this landing page might be shared on social media or maybe via an email, right? So this is not going to be a page that you can click on when you when you visit my website. Um, this is something that I'm going to use as a marketing tool. So if we um, click on page, we will notice that this landing page has still been assigned to the page template. All right, so we will come back to that now. So let's make our way to the site editor. And now we want to create, um, so of course my, my landing page has got nothing to do with this example website, but um, I just use this website for, um, for the example. Um, so we're gonna click on templates. And now we are going to create a new custom template and we will call it landing page template. And now we can click create. So I actually don't want my landing page to have a header or to have a footer. I want folks coming to my landing page to click on shop now or to explore um, the music that I have on offer. So I'm not going to add a header footer. I'm not going to add a header template bot or footer template bot. I am just going to add my post content block. So if you add your post content block, remember that's going to pull in the information from that landing page. And that's actually the only thing I want to add here. Now, one thing I've noticed, of course, preparing for this, is that the, um, the style of my post content block actually influences um, the display of my, um, of my content. So the one thing I want to do here, or maybe let's, let's test this. Okay, so I'm going to keep it wide width 
I'll just keep it here. So let's click save. And we can see how it, how it changes together. Okay, now we're gonna make our way back to our page, our landing page, right? Landing page. So we've got all our content that will be displayed through the post content block. And you'll see my call to actions here, shop now, listen now. Make sure you open up your sidebar settings and then assign this page to your custom template, which is my landing page template. And now I will update. Now it's interesting, you would have seen this information, it, it's displaying differently. And I don't know if that's a bug or what's going on there. Maybe somebody else can tell me, but um, let's see what it looks like on the front end now. So let's preview. So it displays correctly on the front end, but you would have noticed that um, my post content block was actually um, full width. And therefore, this information is displaying full width. Okay, so of course, if somebody clicks on, on this, on this um, link on social media, it will bring them here. And as I said, you don't want them to go to your website, you want them to, to click on one of the call to, calls to action. Okay, so let's see how we can change the display here slightly. So let's make our way back to the site editor. Um, and open up our landing page template. Click on the pencil. So you will notice if you select the post content block, you can't really change the alignment to full width or wide width. So to do that, I'm going to click on the three vertical dots and I'm actually going to group this. I'm going to um, add it to a group block. And now when you add it to a group block, you'll notice it already displays differently. And if you open your list view, you will see that you've got more options in your toolbar. And now you will see, we can say, oh, let's actually change this to wide width. Let's save. Okay, so we've updated our landing page. Again, let's go to our page which is our landing page. I know it looks, it displays differently here, but let's see what it looks like on the front end. And now you will see it um, is not in wide, um, it's not in full width anymore, it's in wide width. And I actually prefer it this way. So I'll keep it, um, I'll keep it wide width. So those are the, the two examples that I wanted to um, go through today. And now we are, are welcome to chat more, ask more questions, or maybe there's something I, you want me to show again. Um, so Susan's asking an important question. Um, do you need a, sorry, our child seems still a good practice. Absolutely, um, Susan. Um, you always want to create a child team if you can, especially with regards to updates and, 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 and those things. Yeah, thank you, Anne. Um, Anne says, sorry, just scrolling up here. And there's a plugin called Create Block Theme, absolutely. And you can save the changes you made two templates by creating a child team there automatically. And then you can reuse it for another client. It's pretty neat. Yeah. The create block theme is a is a, an excellent plugin to use. Okay, Laura, is there anything else that you wanted to, um, to mention or something that I missed out before we say goodbye? No, I, I think just realizing that the confusion between what a template is and your page is uh, because a lot of people and I, me included, I was 
customizing and styling my template. And then I got confused on what the page is because the page is going to look a little bit different, especially when you have your post already and pulling that those posts into the template. Um, so just having that difference within there um, and just taking your time with it and exploring like like Wes does on, on here um, is the thing to kind of just take a deep breath about sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. I think I think and I think that is something a lot of people, myself included, struggled with is making the differentiation and that that posts and pages are for content and templates are for design and structure. So in your templates, you are mainly going to add headers, footers, and for example, uh, a query loop block. Um, those are the main things that, that they that they used to to create that structure for your for your page. Oh, thank you, Barry. Um, I appreciate that feedback. Um, so yeah, now it's your turn to create your custom templates. Um, I hope it goes well. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Laura, for helping out in, in the chat and for everyone's participation. So thanks for joining. Bye, everyone. <laughs>